Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we'll be taking a look at the budget minded 4K video editing and gaming PC that you can build for somewhere around the £600 mark, which in my book is pretty darn good value for money. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at a budget minded 4K video editing monster, which also is capable of a little bit of gaming. So if you're into content creation, or you maybe just want to stream some games to your friends, or just want a general purpose PC, this could be right up your street. So we're going to go through today, go through the parts that I've chosen for this, some of the reasons why I've done that, and also we're we'll taking a look at some of the gaming prowess, and also how well it does in video editing using Adobe Premiere Pro. So to preface this, I should say as well, this is designed mostly around Premiere Pro and using a Intel processor and an NVIDIA graphics card. That is the way to get the best out of a system, especially when you're on a limited budget and want to do a little bit of video editing with Adobe Premiere Pro. It does highly favor NVIDIA graphics cards and loves to have a little bit of quick sync from your Intel processor. If you're watching this and you just want to do a little bit of gaming on a budget-minded PC, then potentially I would probably swap out some of the things in this particular build, such as maybe go for an AMD processor. You can pick up a very similar powered processor, a newer model as well, something like the Ryzen 5600, and a inexpensive AM4 board for probably about the same or a little bit less. So if you want possibly maybe a slight bit of future proofing, then AM4 platform might be the better way to go if gaming is purely your aspect. Although if you are looking at video editing again, like I said, it does seem that Adobe Premiere Pro does favor Intel and Nvidia, so that is the way we're going. So let's go first of all and take a look at the specifications of the PC over on PC Part Picker, and this will be listed in the video description below, so if you wanna check it out and maybe customize it a little bit to suit your particular needs and also the region that you're shopping in, then please feel free to do so. Okay, so this is our PC Part Picker list, so let's go through the process. We'll try and fire through this pretty quickly. Now the processor and the motherboard, I actually managed to get a particularly good deal from one of our Discord members, Kieran, and uh, yeah, that was basically what started this all off. This PC was essentially gonna be CAF's video editing PC to upgrade from her slightly older Ryzen CPU, but uh, that may or may not happen. So anyway, processor-wise, we've got a six core processor. This is the Intel Core i5-11400. This is the 400 version, not the F version or the K or anything like that. So this has integrated Intel graphics, which is gonna give us that little bit of extra boost when it comes to video editing. This makes a lot of sense for this particular setup. Cooling wise, we've gone with the ID Cooling SE214 XT. As you can probably see from the video, this isn't the cooler I've actually got in the system at present. It is a very similar one, although price wise, I would probably go with the ID Cooling SE214. It does seem to be on good value offers pretty much universally around the globe. Motherboard wise, I think I would probably go ahead and spend a little bit of extra money if you're gonna be doing video editing because you do want that stability. We've gone with the ASUS ROG Strix Z590-F Gaming Wi-Fi. So we've got some really good features on there such as Wi-Fi 6E, an absolute ton of USB ports on the back, which is absolutely great. So if you've got your capture cards or external devices, they're gonna run nice and fast. It's a great board. There are limitations with the ASUS software for things like RGB and obviously Armory Crate sucks terribly, but in terms of reliability and stability, this is a great board. And of course, if you wanted to at a later date, you could throw in a 11900 or a higher end processor and this board has the VRMs and the power management to deal with it effectively. When it comes to RAM, we've gone with 16 gigs. It would have been nice to have 32 gigs in here, but again, this is a slightly more budget minded offering. So I would essentially go for whatever is cheapest and of a reasonable quality. Kingston Fury Beast is uh, generally pretty decent. Although in our particular setup, we're actually using something a little bit different. We're using the V-Color DDR4 Prism Pro, which is actually DDR4 4000, which actually bizarrely still runs really well on this processor at the full 4000 megahertz. Although that isn't entirely necessary, but some people may prefer that extra frequency availability. When it comes to our storage, we've gone with a single solid state drive. So this is Kingston's NV2, one terabyte. Very good value for money at the moment. It is PCI Express Gen 4 times four, so potentially get lots of speed from it. I would suggest with this go for a, I would suggest with this go with a decent branded quality drive wherever you live. Again, the Kingston NV2 drives do appear to be available pretty much globally at really good prices. 
You could obviously, if you want to, swap this out with the SN570 if you wanted to, or very similar drives. You should find them all round about about the £50 mark for a one terabyte model. Graphics card wise, this is going to be one which is going to be a bone of contention for a lot of people. We've gone with a used one from CEX here in the UK. I've actually listed in here as a Palette Storm X, which is actually available in some places. It's an older graphics card, so you may have to scour the second hand and used markets. CEX had this on sale for £155, and we have got the EVGA version of this, but yeah, they are pretty much all the same. 6 gigs is going to give you a little bit more breathing room other than something like a GTX 1650 Super, which would be a very similar card in most respects, but the extra bit of VRAM there is going to be helpful. Case-wise, you can go with whatever case you want, whatever uh, suits your particular needs. We've gone with something which is relatively mid-range, plenty of room in there for expansion and extra hard disk drive should you want to put in some bulk storage. Cooler Master Masterbox MB511, you can pick those up in the UK for somewhere around the £50 mark. But again, when it comes to cases, there's going to be all kinds of personal preferences, so go with whatever you like. Power supply-wise, I would certainly suggest going for something which is gold certified, ideally around the kind of 500 to 600 watts mark. If you want a little bit of future proofing, then obviously you can up your wattage. But in terms of actual spec and quality of drive, I've used this drive with a much higher spec system and it's been absolutely flawless. This you can pick up in the UK for somewhere in the region of just slightly over £60 and it is fully modular, so therefore making cable management a little bit more easy. And if we go down to the bottom there, we can see our total spend here is somewhere in the region of just over £600. Again, with inflation and price changes, etc., depending on when you're watching this video, the prices may have increased or decreased slightly. And again, if you shop around and be a little bit smarter, you can save some money. We've also added in some extra niceties, such as some addressable RGB lighting and some additional cooling, of which we are using the up here six fan set, although I've only actually installed four of them. So we've got two spares. And also we've gone for a separate controller for the actual lighting. There is a Ergo eight port ARGB and fan hub, so you can attach more devices if you want to, so to simplify things. But again, the choice is yours when it comes to those kinds of uh, more aesthetic choices. Again, like I said, if you want to, I'll put the link for this in the video description so you can modify it to suit your own needs and see what prices are like in your local region. So there's the parts, and looking at the PC itself, it's running very nicely. It runs very, very cool indeed. The processor doesn't get very hot at all, even under rendering conditions, etc. And it's very quiet. I can sit next to it. My lav mic should not be picking up very much of it. There may be a very slight hum, but essentially it is quiet. Something which is really good from this graphics card, the EVGA GeForce GTX 1660, is it does support zero fan technology. So when it doesn't have to spin up, the fans will be completely still, which is excellent for noise purposes. So if you are recording footage or you're just working, you don't want to be distracted by fans. And of course, with this nice 120 mil cooler, the same applies. It's very quiet and you can configure it however you want to. We've only got four fans in here, bring in a little bit of fresh air, so that is fine. Again, they're very good, these up here fans. We've done a review on them previously. I'll try and link them in the video description as well, so if you want to pick up a set, highly recommended, very cheap and cheerful, gets the job done. And actually, I think they look pretty pretty, if that's the thing. Now, other things to note with this, obviously the motherboard itself is gonna be one of those things that you may wanna change or may get something slightly different. This does have options for fitting up to three NVMe drives, which is excellent, so for potential extra storage, or maybe installing a smaller drive as a scratch drive for your Adobe Premiere. Adobe Premiere doesn't like to have a separate scratch drive if possible for scrubbing through footage, etc. So that potentially might be something you'd be interested in when funds become available. So that's pretty much it for the PC itself and the build. So let's take a look at how it actually performs. So first of all, we'll take a look at some Adobe Premiere and see how well it does with some 4K footage. Though so this is a 4K video file, which I used actually for a video I've done recently. And I've got to be honest with you, I was very surprised. This performs excellently. The built-in onboard graphics on this combined with the NVIDIA chipset using NVENC, etc., is very, very good. This actually performs better than some of the AMD systems I've done recently, which have been considerably more expensive. But that is the thing with Adobe Premiere. Like I've said already many, many times, if you are looking at using Adobe Premiere, I think personally, you do have to go with the NVIDIA graphics card, like it or hate it. And also the benefits of QuickSync with Intel CPUs 
does make an absolute ton of difference as you can use both graphics cards at the same time. So that makes rendering quicker, scrubbing along the timeline and all that kind of good stuff. So let's take a look at some examples Which of that now. Which isn't particularly cavernous, but certainly is better than some cases on the market. The actual back panel, got a little bit of flex to it, but it does seem relatively good. So looking in the back, again, big cutout for your... And clearly, you're not going to use your PC purely for video editing. You are going to be using it for other things, such as, uh, well, possibly gaming. So let's take a look at some examples of gaming, and I'll give you some voiceovers to give you a run through. You will see the frames per second in the top left-hand corner, which is monitored with MSI Afterburner, so you can get an idea of what is going on. And also, I'll tell you about the settings in the game as well. But to be honest with you, cut a long story short, it just runs really well for the money. Okay, so as you can see, this is Cyberpunk 2077. This is set to the high preset. As you know, there are a lot of things you can go in here to configure for various graphical options. So I've just done the quick preset to high. 1080p, runs really well, looks pretty decent. Although, sadly, when I was recording this, I realized after that in OBS, I only have the bitrate set to like four megabytes. So this is a very, very low quality recording, but actually still looks pretty decent. and. As you can see from the frames per second, we're getting somewhere in the region. It does swing around a little bit in the more crowded areas. We're looking at 60 FPS in the more enclosed sequences, such as where we are now, 70 to 80 as we move around. It doesn't really change a great deal as you go from scene to scene, although you do find as you switch from a certain area to an area, there is often a little spike where it's loading textures in the background, which I guess due to our six gigabyte limitation might be a thing but overall game plays very well looks very good very smooth performance as you can see from that frame time so yeah a very enjoyable experience and for pretty much the same price as a rx 6400 which is uh, not a particularly good card so next up is going to be far cry 5 new dawn this is uh, a slightly older title now but still graphically relatively intense again i do apologize i have set the bitrate very very low for this recording so yeah it actually does look much better in real life yeah, trust me on this it does but what doesn't get better in real life is the frames per second it still stays around about 100 frames per second so 1080p mostly high settings runs very smoothly in this particular area it's uh, relatively wide open so the 100 frames per second is actually pretty decent for here, so in a more enclosed area where there's not so much foliage and other stuff going on, it will go up a lot higher. But 100 frames per second, I think, is a very respectable figure. You could, if you wanted to, really notch this up to 1440p, maybe reduce it down to medium. This is one of those games that looks pretty good anyway, regardless of which resolution you're at. But, yep, 1080p, 100 FPS in wide open spaces. I think that you can ask uh, a great deal more of a relatively budget video card. And next is something which has also been upgraded recently. This is Far Cry. This is Chapter 4, or Season 4, whichever it is. Season 4, Chapter 1. I don't know. I lose track. But this is the new updated version with all the uh, the very cool lighting effects and all that kind of stuff. And it does look amazing, it really does. And this graphics card does, again, we're at a very similar point. So this is set to the display defaults for this card. So this is what Fortnite thinks the card should be running at. And it's kind of like a mixture of high. The view distance or draw distance, I think, is high rather than ultra which some people may prefer that, but then pretty much most of the other things like texture, packs, etc., are all set to high. So some people would maybe tweak those down a little bit for competitive gameplay. But saying that, around about 90 to 100 frames per second in pretty much most places with this graphics card. Again, it's only a 1660. It's only 6 gigs. It's only around about 150 pounds on the used market. I think it does really well. And obviously, if you want to tweak it more, you could get up to 200 frames per second very easily. This is actually running in DirectX 11 mode, rather than DirectX 12 or performance mode, which is obviously an option as well for competitive gameplay, should you wish to. I think it looks really, really good. And considering the amount of wattage this is using, the amount of power, the amount of noise it makes, which isn't terrible, I think this is really, really good. And the actual frame times are relatively stable as well. Yeah, it looks pretty good. And yeah, it plays very well. No complaints whatsoever. 
looks good, feels good, no uh, lag or any weird stuff. And actually not a great deal of the kind of stutter that we get with some GPUs and CPU combinations. So very good outing, enjoyed this a lot. I do sadly quite enjoy Fortnite. Anyway, let's move on. So next up is Red Dead Redemption 2. This actually, I only downloaded this yesterday and I've never played it before, so this is the kind of intro to the game almost. So you just, it's almost like it's on rails, you just do what you're told, go along. But what I noticed straight away was the lighting effects are absolutely awesome. Again, this was set to the game's defaults, so whatever the system decided was the best for 1080p, this is what we get. So we're getting somewhere in the round about 50 frames per second, just slightly under at times. This I feel not having played the game in any depth at all because we've got an absolute ton of things going on here so we've got lighting effects we've got shadow effects we've also got the snow coming in shadows global illumination all that kind of stuff considering what it is and how graphically intense this scene actually is i was very surprised that it did as well as it did i was expecting somewhere in the 20s to 30s like a cinematic style but this is actually not too bad at all and with a, a very small amount of tweaking we could get an extra couple of frames per second to get it to a stable 60, I'm pretty sure. But this is one of those games that I've not really played, so yeah, you can get an idea of what it's like. I do like the illumination. That does seem to work well from those lanterns around the horses and stuff. But I'm yet to play this game in any depth, so uh, maybe my mind will change depending on how far we get into it. Anyway, there's a look at what this is like with Red Dead Redemption 2. 1080p, I'm pretty sure it's high settings throughout, but yeah. Again, a very good outing. So settling back down into my comfort zone somewhat, this is Wreckfest 1080p Ultra Settings. So this is the first outing of Ultra Settings we've had on today's uh, mini test. And it still runs really well, even in the congested section here at the very start of the race. We're still getting around about 70 to 100 frames per second, depending on where we are. This is game, one of those games which kind of fluctuates quite rapidly depending on how open or how much physics is going on in the game but overall looks good my driving is awful I've uh, completely missed that corner but actually it seems to be going pretty well and yeah again Wreckfest great title looks great plays really well very slick and uh, looking at the frame rate at the bottom there you see the frame times are basically a flat line it's really really smooth and it feels really good so if you are into competitive wreckfest this is going to be awesome for you so anyway there you go there's wreckfest 1080p ultra settings so there you go there you have it a pc for somewhere in the region of about 600 pounds which you can relatively easily put together for yourselves and have an absolutely excellent experience in video editing on somewhat of a budget realistically if you're going all out for video editing especially with 4k files you would normally be looking at spending in excess of a thousand pounds without even blinking these days with modern brand new parts. But by shopping a little bit carefully and also picking up some used bargains, you can create a cracking machine for very little money. So I think that's going to pretty much wrap this one up. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and it's given you a little bit of food for thought if you are considering building yourself a slightly more budget-minded 4K video editing machine with a little bit of gaming on the side, then hopefully this is going to be right up your street. Don't forget, Links for most of this will be in the video description below as well, and also the PC part picker list. And if you want to pick up any of the other items, such as the fans, etc., there probably will be individual review videos for pretty much most of the bits we've used here, so feel free to check those out. If you also like to see this type of content in your inbox on a daily basis, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and the join notification, maybe in sort of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.